Hey, this is Parker with a Final Cut Express tutorial. A little while back, I did a tutorial called Final Cut Express Introduction and Basics. It was my very first tutorial I ever did, so it was a bit crappy and not very good quality. So today, about two years later, I'm going to go back and I'm going to redo it and hopefully make it 10 times better than I did it before. Hopefully you'll learn a lot, but we got a lot to cover, so let's head on over into Final Cut Express. Now, when you first open Final Cut Express, this is what you'll see. You'll see your Sequence 1 icon here, your viewer and your canvas and your timeline are all blank. So uh, let's start importing some clips and working with, working with Final Cut. So I'm going to go up to File, Import, Files. I'm just going to grab my first video clip called Untitled 1. I'm going to click Choose. Now I'm also going to, I can also do that by pressing Command I. And I'm going to go and grab a uh, royalty free audio track that I downloaded from iTunes. Now we have our icon thumbnails here, so we can kind of move them around very easily. But if you notice, this could get very scattered and unorganized very, very easily as we add more clips. So we want to view this in a more easier on the eye fashion. So I'm going to right click and hit view as list. Now it's a little more organized and we can, uh, we can see it a little better. Now if I want to get more organized, I can right click and press new bin. Now what this is, it's kind of a folder within our browser. We're working in our browser here where we can um, import clips and we can view all of our attributes and assets of our project. So I'm just going to hit the bin and click assets. I'm going to drag our audio clip and our video clip into there. I'm going to scroll that down and I'm just going to rename our audio or our video uh, clip. Just clip. All right. So now it's a bit more organized if we're dealing with more clips there. So now, um, as we have this organized, if, we, if you notice, there's a lot of little icons over here that give us some good information, like the duration, the in and out points, the tracks. Um, but what I like to do is I like to right click on it and just click show thumbnail. Now with clips, if you just scroll over it, that'll let you scrub through the whole entire clip. I think that's very nice, and it gives a little preview of what that clip is. So now, as we uh, we kind of covered the browser, that's only in the one tab. Now we want to go over to the effects tab, and uh, here we have all of our audio and video effects and filters that um, we can get into a little bit later. So uh, I'm just going to drag our clip into the viewer, because the viewer is where you can do exactly that. You can view the clip. So if we drag it into the viewer, or we can simply just double click it, and we hit play, we can see what our clip is. And we can scrub through the whole thing, and uh, just kind of get a preview of what it is. Now this clip isn't in our project yet. We haven't added it to the timeline, but this is just kind of viewing it temporarily. Now we have some tabs over here for uh, the audio 1 and audio 2 tracks. And also our filters tab if we add a filter from the effects and filters uh, menu. We also have a motion tab that we can adjust the scale and rotation and all this other neat stuff. So now it's in here. Um, say we want to go and we want to select only a portion of a clip. I want to go and select from here to here. So let's go back. And uh, say from here, I'm just going to press I. That sets an in point on that portion. I'm going to go right about here and press O. So that sets an out point. So now that we have our in and out point selected, I'm just going to drag this into the timeline. And this is going to ask, change sequence settings to match the clip settings. And I'm going to say yes, because that will format our sequence to fit the exact dimensions of our clip. And I don't know why you would say no in that situation, but I'm just going to say yes. So now we have our clip inside of our timeline. If you notice, we can view it in our canvas because the canvas displays everything that is being played in the timeline. The viewer is just kind of a temporary state if you want to preview something or make an adjustment to a specific thing. But the canvas shows everything that we are viewing in live action in real time in our video. So now that we have our video clip, I want to fit it so it fits the timeline a bit more comfortably. Comfortably. So I'm going to hit Shift-Z, and it'll fit the timeline perfectly. 
Now our clip is still just a little too long, so I want to cut it right about there. Um, I want to. I can do it one of two ways. I can either go to the end of it and just drag it in, or more simply, I can go to the blade tool or press B and just click it. Now you'll notice it snaps right to there, which I like a lot. And we can turn snapping on and off right there. So now we have our other clip, so I'm going to hit Shift Z again, and it will fit it right to the timeline perfectly. Great. So now I want to add my own audio track that we imported and get rid of this audio in the background of the video clip. If we click on it, we notice that it selects both the clip and the audio because this is the audio track, this is the video track. But I only want to delete the audio. So how do we get by that? Well, because why it's doing that is because it's linking is turned on. No, I don't want to auto save it. So uh, linking is turned on. That links the video and the audio together. So now if you notice everything is separated. So we can do that and we can just highlight them both and click delete. Or what we can do is we can uh, press option and we can just click on both and hit shift and select them both. So we can do that uh, more than one way. So now we have our video clip with no audio, and we just want to go down here and add our audio clip. Hit Shift Z again to fit it with the timeline. Then I'm going to go right to where my clip ends, and I'm going to hit B, and of course it will snap to there and just cut it. And then hit Shift Z again. You'll notice this. Uh, this is what you do a lot. This kind of um, system. Now if you notice, now that we added that audio track, we get this red line across the top. And if we play our, our video, we'll just get this beeping noise. That means it needs to be rendered. Rendering is kind of downloading the video clip, uh, or the audio clip, for the computer to be able to play. It's preparing itself to be able to play it. Because it doesn't really recognize the clip right away, so it needs to format itself to be able to recognize it. So uh, to get by that, all we need to do is hit Shift R. This will ask me your your uh, project has not been saved yet. It'll just save under unknown project on the scratch disk, and I'm just gonna press OK. So now uh, it rendered out very quickly. You can't really determine when you're gonna need to render. Most all the time, you're gonna have to audio uh, render an audio clip that you add in, like a music track. But uh, some video clips you don't. Some video clip most of the video clips you do. All depends on the formatting, and uh, you can't really predict it. But now that we have it rendered, you just play it. Great. So now that we have our clip ready, we can start cutting it and adding transitions just by hitting the blade tool and then uh, hitting the A tool to get back to the regular selection tool. Then going up to effects, say video transitions, dissolve, say uh, cross dissolve, just add it right to there. And because it's the same clip, probably won't do anything, but if we go here and uh, make it a different clip, then add that cross dissolve you'll get something like that but go in, go in mess around with it see what you can do uh, with the transitions yourself now the one thing uh, one other thing I do want to highlight is these little icons over here in most applications you'll have a lock option which does just that it locks it and makes it unable for you to to um, edit it and also a an eyeball switch pretty much is what this is so go in, mess around with Final Cut, uh, tell me what you think, go over to my Twitter page and follow me at Parker Nyquist and uh, tell me what you think, reply to one of my, one of my tweets and um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thanks guys, have a great day, bye.